Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor John Polk from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, and we're here to welcome you to another session of the Worship Hour. You know, at Galilee, our focus is building people, building families, and building the kingdom of God. And we would love for you to be a part of that process because our goal is to glorify God in everything that we say and everything that we do. So when we come into the house of God, we want to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. As we get ready to worship, come on and join with us. Come on, everybody. Let's go to church. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We will look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that our help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We will glorify God because God is the maker and the creator of all things. We are, we are the result of his creation. I want to tell you that God loves you this morning and God wants to know how much we love him. Amen. If we express our love to God, we don't have to worry about looking around at anybody else. We don't have to worry about what anybody else is doing because our focus is on lifting up the name of Jesus. When the choir sings today, I want you to know this. They're not singing to you. They're singing to God Almighty. They're leading us into the praise and the worship. And as they lead us into the praise and the worship, the prayer is that we will follow them in praising and worshiping God. Because when we, when all God's children get together, we know that there is going to be a great time in the house of the Lord. You know, there are many th things in this world that will get us down. But I want to tell you something. God can lift us up beyond our trials and our tribulations. The more we focus on the negative, the more we will see the negative. But God is a light, and in him is no darkness at all. So I want you to just take a moment just to just reset your mind, to reset your heart, to close your eyes and just think about the glory of the Lord. To reset and say, here, my Lord, I'm here to lift you up this morning. I'm here to make a connection with you this morning. I'm here to glorify you. As the choir sings, let us join together and praise the Lord. Let us join together and glorify his name. Amen, amen, and amen. The Bible says that we should trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. And so with that, we just say today, Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. Oh. Father, I trust you. Father, 
saints if you're sitting back and you're thinking about the roast that you're getting ready to go to <clears throat> I just want you to know that the roast can't save your soul if you're looking forward to next week and you're looking to the start of the NFL season I want you to ask yourself which one of those NFL owners has ever sent you a check and tried to deliver you from your struggles your trials and your tribulations if you're sitting back and you're wondering if you're going to be able to get to the park and to hang out with your friends and your family, it's good to hang out with friends and family, but if you really want to have a good time, I want to tell you to let go and let God. Trust the Lord and praise and lift up His holy name. People may look at you funny if you praise God, but that's okay because God is the one that kept you. God is the one that delivered you. God is the one that brought you out here this morning. God is the one who helped to make it a way possible for you when you didn't have any other way. So we come this morning and we lift up the name of Jesus because he is the one that's worthy to be praised. We want to thank God as we've come to this time where we come to hear a word from the Lord. We come to hear what thus saith the Lord, because God is trying to get us to that place where not, we not only do those things that are pleasing in his sight, but we do those things that secure our place in eternity, in heaven with him. Amen. I'm going to ask if you would this morning, if you would open up your Bibles and turn to the book of Numbers and turn to chapter 11. I'm going to do my best just to stand right behind the podium this morning. If I make it, I make it. If I don't, I won't. Amen. Numbers chapter 11, verses 31 through 35 are going to be the core scriptures. But what I want you to do is I want you to turn to 
Now look at verse number four. And we're going to look at verse number four through six. And then we will read the core scriptures, verses 31 through 35. Numbers chapter 11. I'm going to ask if you're able, if we'd all stand in reverence to the reading of God's word from the youngest to the oldest. We want everyone standing. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. If the president walked in the room, we'd jump up. Amen. But I want to talk to you about somebody who's greater than the president. Amen. Amen. If your favorite athlete or entertainer jump, came in the room, you'd jump up and try to get to him. But I want to talk to you about somebody who's even greater than your favorite athlete or entertainer. I'm talking about none other than God. Amen. We talk about Elohim. We talk about Jehovah. We talk about Yahweh. We talk about El, uh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Sidkenu. We're talking about the one and only creator of all things, and that is God Almighty. I'll be reading to you from the New King James Version. And the word reads as follows on verse four. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. So the children of Israel always wept again and said, who will give us meat to eat? We remember the fish which we ate freely in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our whole being, boy, that's a strong statement. But now our whole being is dried up. There's nothing at all except this manna before your eyes. Verse number 31. Now a wind went out from the Lord and it brought quail from the sea and left them fluttering near the camp about a day's journey on this side and about a day's journey on the other side all around the camp and about two cubits above the surface of the ground and the people stayed up all day all night and all the next day and gathered the quail he who gathered least gathered ten homers and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp but while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was chewed, the wrath of the Lord was aroused against the people. And the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. So he called the name of that place Kibroth Hataava, because they were buried, the people who had yielded to the craving. From Kibroth Hataava, the people moved to Hazaroth and camped at Hazaroth. Verse 6. But now our whole being is dried up. There's nothing at all except this manna before your eyes. I'd like to speak with you from this topic. Be careful what you ask for. Amen. Be careful what you ask for because you might end up with a deadly craving be careful what you ask for you may be seated in the presence of the lord let us pray father god we just come to you now in the name of your son jesus to give you the glory the honor and all the praise and to thank you for everything you've done we call on you now, Lord, and we ask that you would be with us, that you would lead and guide us through this word, that you would help us to do those things that draw us near to you and not separate us from you. Lord God, we ask that you would speak now. And as you speak, God, we pray that you would give us ears to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what thus saith the Lord. These and many other things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be careful what you ask for because it may result in a deadly craving. Amen. You know, it's unfortunate, but I can say with all honesty that in today's society and yesterday's society and the day's society before that, we have a lot of people who are never ever satisfied. Most of the time people have an unquenchable thirst 
for something other than what God has already blessed them with. We're always looking for the next great phone. You know, that new foldable phone that everybody has that everybody wants to go out and get. And they say, come in and trade in your phone and we'll give you $1,000 off. Well, if they're going to give me $1,000 off, you know what the cost of the phone already is. <laughs> they want to get the next best car. I want to be the first one on the block with an electric vehicle. They want to get the next best, whatever it is. They want to get the next best. I read a story about an encounter between a Mexican fisherman and an American tourist. And the tourist was uh, in a little village and he saw this boat that was docked next to the dock. And he went up to the fisherman and he complimented the fisherman on the quality of his fish and he asked him, he said, how long did it take you to get that? And the fisherman told him, he said, you know, it didn't take me very long. And the American tourist said, well, why didn't you stay out there a little bit longer so you could catch more fish? And the fisherman told him, said, listen, this small catch is sufficient to meet me and my family's needs. And the, Amer the American tourist said, but what do you do the rest of the time? And the fisherman said, well, when I'm not out fishing, fishing, I sleep late, fish a little, play with my children in the village, I go to see my friends, I play my guitar, sing a few songs, I have a full life. And the American said, well, wait, 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 wait now. I have an MBA from Harvard, and I can help you. He said, you know what you ought to do? You ought to start by going out, you ought to fish a little bit longer. Because if you fish a little bit longer, you can catch more fish. And when you catch more fish, you can buy more boats. And when you buy more boats, you can sell more fish. And after you sell more fish, you can start a business. And you can cut out the, you can cut out the middleman. And you can have a whole empire, a fisherman empire. And when you get all those millions of dollars... He said, then you can go and you can leave this little, little village and you can go to Mexico City or you can go to Los Angeles or you can go to New York City and boy, you can have yourself a huge enterprise. And then the Mexican said, okay, how long would that take? He said, oh, about 20, 25 years. And then the man said, then the, then the fisherman said, and after that? He said, well, after that, You'll be able to retire. Then you'll be able to live in a little tiny village near the coast. You'll be able to sleep late. You'll be able to play with your children. You'll be able to catch a few fish. You'll be able to play your guitar. You'll be able to hang out with your friends. You'll be all satisfied. I know the fisherman had to look at him and say, well, I'm doing that right now. Why, why do I need to go through all that trouble that you talked about? And wait 20 to 25 years when I'm already doing. You see, the American tourist thought he was actually helping the Mexican fisherman to live a better life. But what he was doing is he was trying to instill a craving in the fisherman that the fisherman didn't really need. See, he was trying to instill that craving and that craving could actually lead the fisherman into the sin of covetousness and you know whenever we covet something we're never satisfied with what we have that 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 covetousness will cause us to be ungrateful for the blessings of God blind to the blessings of God and can put us in danger of receiving the wrath of God yeah that fisherman was pretty happy where he was, but the American tourists were trying to get him to move beyond a place of satisfaction into a place where he didn't really need to be. He was trying to instill that craving in him. And sometimes when we engage in certain cravings, we become ungrateful for the blessings of God. See, we need to in avoid the spirit of covetousness 
Because it makes us lose sight of the blessings that God has already given us. When I look at Numbers chapter 11, what this chapter shows me is that the children of Israel fell to lusting and wept because they said, Oh, where are all the melons out here in the wilderness? Oh, where are all the cucumbers? Oh, where's all the meat? Show me the meat. I want some meat. They wanted to get flesh to eat. They said, who shall give us meat to eat? All they could remember was what they ate in Egypt. And they said, they cried out, but now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. See, these people completely forgot that God had heard their earlier cries for food when they had no food in the desert. They forgot that God is the one who bought them quail before they forgot that God is the one who decided to provide them with manna. You know that little bread that God was going to give them right from heaven's table. They forgot. That even though they got the same manner every day that they found all of these ways to fix this manna. But just because it was the bread from heaven's table, it didn't have enough variety to it. They received a miracle every day. They received a miracle every day as God fed them with food. They talked about, oh, we got all of this free food in Egypt, but they forgot that God gave them free food every day. Every day. All they had to do was go outside and pick it up. But yet they felt they had a need for more. They became ungrateful. To the Lord God Almighty. And I got to tell you my brothers and sisters. Sometimes we fall into the same trap as the Israelites. We have everything that we need in life to be happy. But we're not satisfied with the money we make. With the family we have. With the church that we serve in. With the material things that God has already blessed us with. Proverbs 10 and 22 says this. The blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. Think about this. God's favor can make us rich in more ways than just having a lot of money. That fisherman didn't need a whole lot of money. That American tourist thought that man needed money, but that fisherman didn't need a whole lot of money because he was already blessed by God. That tourist thought he was helping that fisherman, but the fisherman was content with the life that he already had. Paul said, I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. I know how to be content with whatever state I'm in. How many of us can say that we know how to be content with the state that we're in. How do you see your life? Can you appreciate what God has done for you? Can you appreciate what God is already doing for you? Can you appreciate the things that are yet on the horizon that God has not even shown you yet? God has not yet opened up the storeroom of blessing to show you what I'm getting ready to give you. See, we come to the house of God sometimes and we come and our lips are stuck out. Because we all mad and frustrated. We come to the house of God sometimes and we got this big old, this wrinkle in our forehead. Because we all mad and upset about something. But if we come to the house of God and begin to appreciate all that God has done for us and all that God is doing for us, then we would be able to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise because we say, God, I'm grateful for the blessings that you've already given me. See, we got to be careful what we ask for in this life. Because if we're not careful for what we ask for, we begin to crave those things that God doesn't want for us to have. 
Those cravings can make us blind to the blessings of God. They can make us blind to the blessings of God. Look back at the Israelites in the wilderness. This was not the first time they complained against God. Hallelujah. It wasn't the first time. They complained about not having meat before, and God sent them quail. They complained about not having water before, and God made water. I said God made. Somebody say God made. God made. Yeah, I don't want you to confuse the story and make you think that Moses made water come out of the rock. That was God that made water come out of the rock. Moses was just a vessel. God made water come out of the rock to feed it, uh, to, to satisfy the thirst of over two million people. They complained about God bringing them out of the land of plenty in Egypt. You know, good old Egypt. And they complained about coming out of good old Egypt and having to walk in the wilderness. You know, sometimes we complain about the good old days. But the problem with thinking of, with the good old days is sometimes our memory becomes faulty and them good old days wasn't really that good. Let me send you back to the time when you were 15, 14, and 13 and people were bullying on you. They called you crazy. They called you all kinds of names. Let me send you back to that time when you were 20 and 25 and you could barely make ends meet. Oh, those, 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 were, those were the good old days. You know, the only thing that I have, had in the house... Was some spam and some beans and rice. That's all I had. Hallelujah. Let me take you back to the good old days. Oh, I done already busted the word. I walked around from the pulpit. Hallelujah. I couldn't help myself. I could not help myself. I tried. I tried. I tried. But sometimes the good old days are only good because our memories have become faulty. And the Israelites said, oh, you took us out of the land of plenty, God. Oh, Moses, you took us out of the land of plenty to kill us out here in the wilderness. You wanted us to come out of Egypt. But their memories of Egypt had gotten corrupted. They, they, they developed selective amnesia. They began to think about the melons and the garlics and the onions and the leeks and all the meat that they had. And they said all of that stuff was free. You know you didn't get that stuff for free. You wasn't nothing but a slave down in Egypt. You got the crumbs from the table. You got the whip from the overseer. You got the hard jobs and didn't get any pay. You got oppressed and didn't even realize that you talking about coming out of the land of plenty in the good old days. They had selective amnesia. They forgot all about the brutality and the suffering that they went through. They forgot about the fact that for 400 years they pleaded with God to come and be their deliverer. If the days were so good, why are you pleading with God to come and ask you to deliver you from the land of plenty? Hallelujah! Let's stop talking about the good old days and start glorifying God for today. Hallelujah! See, God is the one. God is the one who, who, who freed the people from bondage. Instead of complaining to, to God, they should have been glorifying God. They should have been rejoicing that God displayed his power. And as Pharaoh was trying to hold them, Moses was up saying, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who is your God? But God said, I am God. God brought down ten plagues on Pharaoh. And Pharaoh didn't have any choice but to let him his people go how has God delivered us instead of praising God they were bent on criticizing God instead of blessing God for the hope of getting ready to go into the promised land the only thing that they could do was criticize God instead of looking to the place that God is getting ready to take you and rejoice in the blessings that are yet on your way you are so busy hallelujah looking at everything else that's going wrong in your life amen 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 somebody ought to give me an amen somebody come on come on that's right that's right give me an amen amen I know I know I've been there too hallelujah I've been there too See, sometimes we look back on the life of the Israelites 
And we say, Lord, what in the world were they thinking? How in the world could they uh, uh, miss God's blessings and his presence right there before him? He was a pillar of fire by day and a cloud, a dark cloud by night that continued to lead it. How, thank you, fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day. How could they miss his presence? He was right there. Well, how can we miss his presence? The Holy Spirit lives down on the inside of us. Amen. And he continues to talk with us through his word. He continues to minister to us. He continues to lead and guide us. How do we miss his presence? We get blinded by our cravings we get blinded by our covetousness we get blinded to the point that we can't appreciate the things that God has done for us sometimes the only way that we can appreciate the things that God has done for us is to see somebody in a worse situation than us and if you want to see somebody in a worse situation than you you know you don't you don't you don't you don't appreciate your body let me use that for an example you say, oh, God, every time I get up, my knee hurts. Oh, God, when, I, when I'm moving around, I just can't move so fast. Oh, God, I got this ache, and oh, God, I got this pain. Well, before you start focusing all, on all your aches and pains, I want you to go down to Shannon Hospital and visit some of those rooms where somebody is on oxygen and they can't breathe. I want you to go down to Shannon and visit the, some of those rooms where somebody just come out from under an operation for the same thing that they've had over and over and over again. I want you to see them hooked up to all those machines. The next time you start getting upset about your little aches and pains, you just think about all those people who are in a worse situation than you and say hallelujah thank you God for my achy arm hallelujah thank you God for my achy knee thank you Lord for all that you're doing yeah 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 we need to we can't be blind to what God is already doing the next time you get upset about the little humble house you live in or the apartment that you live in I want you to walk around or drive around San Angelo and see the people who are sleeping on park benches I want you to see the people who are sleeping out in the street they're sleeping under tents they're sleeping under bridges I want you to see those people who are worse off than you and you get to your little house and your little apartment say hallelujah thank you God for blessing me You've been mighty good to me, God. You've been mighty good. And that's time that you wake up in the morning and say, oh, I got to go to this job. I don't like this job. I don't want to go to this job anymore. I want you to walk down the labor ready. And I want you to see all the men who are standing on the corner, been there since 4 o'clock in the morning, vying for a job. They want to get a steady job. But because of life circumstances, they can't get a steady job and can't even take care of themselves nor their families. I want you to praise God for the job that that you got. Hallelujah! Thank you, God, for being so good to me. Be careful, be careful about despising the blessings of God. Be careful about being discontent with what you already have because when we become discontent with the things that we have, we start walking and sinning against the Lord God Almighty. Don't give in to the desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now that as long as you give into the desires of the flesh, you're never, ever, 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 somebody say ever. ever. You're never, ever going to be satisfied. You're always going to want the next best thing that's going to come along. If we're ever going to be satisfied, covetousness, the spirit of covetousness, we got to rebuke the spirit of covetousness in our lives. We got to rebuke the, those cravings, those cravings to be something that God doesn't want us to be and say, God, what would you have me to do? Who would you have me to be? Where would you have me to be? And then just do what God says and be satisfied with where you are. Hallelujah. See, if we ever want to be satisfied, we got to learn to walk in the spiritual things because as long as we walk in the physical things, we could end up in danger of God's wrath. We could end up in danger of the wrath of God. See, the Israelites were adamant. They were adamant. Man, we need. I don't want this man or sister Elaine. I'm tired of manna. 
Send me some meat. You know how you medium rare folks do? Are you rare? Are you medium well? Are you well done folks? Give me some meat. If you can't give me a steak, give me some pepperoni, but let it have some kind of texture to it. Need some meat. I need some meat. I need some meat. And you know they were so adamant that God chose to give them exactly what they asked for. He was, not, he was not giving into the people's demands, but God was going to teach them a lesson. You see, the Lord says, you know what they asked for meat? I'm going to give them so much meat. I'm going to give them meat for not one day, not two days, not ten days. I'm going to give them meat for a whole month. I'm going to give them so much meat that it's going to become disgusting to them. I'm going to give them so much meat that they'll learn to appreciate what I've already done and what I'm doing for them. And I'm going to give them so much meat that they won't be looking back at Egypt anymore, but they'll be looking forward to the hope that I have for them in the promised land the meat was coming y'all but the meat was going to come with a price see Psalm 106 15 says this and he gave them their request but sent leanness into their soul be careful what you ask for see the people asked for meat and God gave them meat but this is what people do. This is what people do. Now, if, if, if you feel a little weight on your toes, it ain't that I'm talking to you. It's that God's talking to you. You know how it is when God opens up the door for a blessing and he says, come on in. God says, just step inside the door. But what we do is we start running all the way around the room. And God ain't told us to run all the way around the room. God said, just step in the door. But we start running around the room. This is mine. This is mine. Who's that? Who, who, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Oh, this is mine. This is mine. This is mine. All over the place. And God sent the meat. God sent a strong wind. And the quail began to come. And there were so many quail. The people's eyes got big. Oh, oh, Sister Donna. They got happy. Here comes the meat. Here comes the meat. And the Bible said that the quail were flying and they were probably about two or three feet above the ground that the people could catch the quail. Some of them went and got some nets and say, I can catch all these quail. They stayed up all day. They stayed up all day the next day. And then all day the next day, they stayed up for 36 hours trying to get, how much quail do you need? How much meat do you actually need? You know how you know how we don't be talking about my meat lovers pizza. <laughs> you know how we do sometimes we go to Arby's and say, I want to get the triple stack. You know, how much meat do you actually need? They stayed up all that time. And and what the thing is that this upset God, and I'm gonna tell you why it upset God. God had told the, the Moses to tell the people to consecrate themselves. To consecrate themselves so that they can receive what I'm getting ready to do. And that word consecrate means set apart. Right? Means, means get yourself ready. Get yourself spiritually ready so that you can receive what I'm getting ready to give you. And then bless me for that which you have received. But the people forgot all about consecrating themselves. And they started thinking about their stomach. Hallelujah. When we let our stomach lead us, I'm telling you, we're in, we in a world of hurt. Amen. The Bible says that, 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 that they got so much meat that they did not sanctify themselves. They did not prepare themselves. And because they did not do what God said to do, they dishonored God. And during the time they should have been feasting, God sent a plague on the people. And those people who participated, who were out there with the nets, you know, I hope ain't nobody here running around with all the nets. Those folks are running around with all the nets. Those folks are running around with sticks trying to knock birds out of the air. Hallelujah. God sent a plague on those people and it killed them because he was displeased with their attitude and with their actions. And I know somebody saying, that ain't right. God sent the birds. What were we supposed to do? 
God sent the bird, but God also said, consecrate yourselves. Set yourselves apart. Get ready. He didn't tell you to go run out there and take all the meat. See, sometimes we like to get ahead of God. God gives us an instruction, and instead of following God's instruction, we get ahead of God because of our craving, because of our covetousness. And when we get ahead of God, we find ourselves in a messed up situation. We allow lust and all these other things to get in the way and the people that lusted after the meat found themselves buried in a grave. Hmm. Moses wanted the people to remember that. So he named the place Kibrath Hata'ava. Kibrath Hata'ava. The graves of craving. The graves of craving. That's what that means. Kibrath Hata'ava, the graves of craving or the graves of lust. Look at all these graves right here. Somebody who lusted after something God didn't want them to have at that particular time is laying in this grave. We don't want to end up in the place of Kibrath Hata'ava. We always want to be where God wants us to be. We as the people of God, I'm going to tell you something. We are not going to find joy in the next best thing because as soon as you get the next best thing, if God didn't tell you to get the next best thing, you're going to be looking for the thing after that. See, the material things in life are not going to bring us satisfaction. It's not going to bring us having the fastest car. Yeah, I was... I was listening, this is a side story. I was watching the other day when we were, when we were out doing the food delivery, right? And, and this guy came, came in front of the car, he had a muscle car. And, and he had that muscle car, he wanted to get on it just a little bit. Not enough to get him a ticket, but he just wanted to get on it a little bit. But he, he, he gunned it, right? I ain't gonna say who it was, but, 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 but one of our brothers said, come on, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, hold on, hold on, brother. Don't go back there. That was yesterday. You can't go run into that jump in that car, right? <laughs> Ooh, he had a flashback. <laughs> Let it do what it do, yeah. <laughs> Every now and then we go, oh, back to the good old days. But remember, don't get amnesia. Because in the good old days, you might have got on it. And guess what was behind you? A blue light right behind you. Amen, amen. I see some hands going up. <laughs> we have to always say, Lord, I want to be where you want me to be. Lord, I want the satisfaction that you can give me. And my satisfaction is not going to come from the things of this world. If we want satisfaction, the Bible charges us to turn to the un unsearchable riches of God. Because God is able to make all grace abound toward us. And in fact, what God has already done is God has already said, I will bless you if you will just Ask for your daily bread. I will give you what you need. All you have to do is ask for your daily bread. I will give you what you need. God says I have both the physical and the spiritual. In other words, God said, need something, call on me, and I will give it to you. Hallelujah. And for the spiritual side, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am come down from heaven. I am the manna that you need. I can fulfill all your spiritual needs. I can do whatever you need for me to do. Feed the spirit inside of you. Don't just feed your stomach. Don't just feed the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Feed the spirit on the inside of you. Jesus is the one that can feed the spirit. Turn to the word. You know, we say that the people of Israel rejected the manna of heaven. Hold your Bibles up. Hold your Bibles up. Hold your Bibles up. Don't you know you have the manna of heaven right there in your hand? 
You have the manna of heaven right there in your hand. How are you going to treat the manna of heaven? Are you going to respect it? Or are you going to reject it because it's not just what you want? See, we got to be careful what we ask for. Because we want to stay focused on the Lord so we don't be in danger of falling to the covetous desires that will destroy us. Because we craved and lusted after the things of the world. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. You know, we've reached that time where we have come to the end of this particular worship service. But the beautiful thing about any and every worship service is we can always spend time with Jesus. You know, Jesus is our Lord. He is our Savior. And my prayer is that after you have been with us today, that maybe you want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. If that's you, then I ask you just to ask the Lord Jesus, come into my heart, Lord. Forgive me for my sins and be my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that prayer and you prayed it earnestly, we want to welcome you to the family of God. But we also want to challenge you to get connected with a church that is teaching the Bible, preaching the Bible, and most of all, living the Bible. God loves you so much, and he would not have us to be alone, but he wants to raise us up so that we can truly be the new creatures in Christ that he talked about. So my brothers and my sisters, we would love for you to be with us anytime you're here in San Angelo, Texas. Drop by 721 West 19th Street. You can join us for our Wednesday night Bible study at 6.15 p.m., or our Sunday morning uh, Sunday school at 9 a.m. Or even for the worship hour at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning. We would love to have the opportunity to love on you. I can't stress enough. God loves you more than you ever know. So please, we want to say thank you. And if you're ever here in San Angelo, come by. But if you can't make it, join us again next week. You know, you can also watch us on Facebook. Or you can watch us on YouTube, or you can watch us on the Gospel America Network. God has truly blessed us. Not only that, if you want to tune in to 100.5 FM, we're on the radio several different times of the week. We would love to share the Word of God with you because we are about carrying the message, the Gospel of Jesus, to the world. May God bless you, and may God keep you. That is our prayer. Have a blessed day. And Father, I need you. Can't do life without.